um, this was in 2007 when we were starting this conversation. Back then, California had just signed into law, Governor Schwarzenegger had signed into law AB 32. So the, the discussion was about cap and trade. We weren't particularly interested in a re, uh, national conversation about that, but, but it occurred to us that in Marin County, we could actually have our own carbon economy where, for instance, the county vehicles had a large carbon footprint and maybe we would be able to sequester carbon and get tax relief or something like that for the people doing that. Those, these were interesting conversations. But the um, question really was, how do you measure it? So we were looking around for a protocol for how to measure carbon that we thought we were sequestering in our soil systems. And we asked that question to Dr. Silver, a professor at UC Berkeley, and she said, well, that's an interesting question. And, and that um, led to the formation of uh, the Marine Carbon Project. And this is an extraordinary group, and it was um, a lot of coordination that happened. And, and part of the holistic management uh, process that Darren Doherty and Abe Collins helped me go through, we identified stakeholders that would help this be a successful project. And through that process, we basically were able to assemble this extraordinary group of people. And I think you might want to talk about who's involved with that. Yeah, this, um, this group is, is really kind of amazing. We, um, we pulled in people from uh, our University Extension Service, um, professors from UC Davis and Berkeley, um, the local resource conservation district, Marin County Resource Conservation District, uh, Agricultural Commissioner, County Ag Commissioner, um, the director of the Marine Agricultural Land Trust, which is a group that uh, buys conservation easements from private lands to keep them in ag, ag and out of development. Um, the Marine Organic uh, aid, uh, Group joined us, um, and uh, our local representative of the NRCS, although she's not ac an active member, is, is participating as a technical consultant. And uh, we also have support from uh, the Marin Community Foundation, which is, is a major uh, donor in, in Marin County. So it, it was kind of remarkable to us that, that we had this enthusiasm from such a wide um, spectrum of, of ag in Marin County. And, and the result of that uh, gathering was, was reframing the question, is it possible to sequester atmospheric carbon in rangeland soils? So to address that question scientifically, now that we had uh, um, some pretty powerful scientists in our organization, um, we had to design a study to look at what the baseline was in order to know whether we could enhance that level. So we did an um, extensive sampling of 35 sites in Marin and Sonoma to a meter deep in rangeland soils that were typical of land under management in our area, which are our dairies and pasture systems. And the results from that survey were amazing. We had a range of carbons in our soil systems that were from 14.5 to 62.5, and I believe that's metric tons. That's correct. Yeah, I have to go back and forth between metric and whatever non-metric is. Um, <laughs> normal is what I'd call it. But <laughs> anyway, this was inspiring. So what's the difference? Why did some of these properties have phenomenally high carbon levels in their soil systems? We did an uh, additional literature search and identified that our soil types or soil findings were a little higher than average statewide. And, and that, was, that was interesting too in terms of uh, larger regional application of our findings later on. So I think I'll let Jeff talk about the graphs. Okay. Um, what we, um, we did when you saw that map of Marin County with a sample sites all over it, and what we had done in setting up that sampling protocol was to stratify by what we termed extensive and intensive management. Basically, we were looking at uh, extensive management being our typical beef operations in the county. Very common practice is continuous year-round grazing, moderate stocking rates, some rotations sometimes. On the intensive side, we had pasture systems that were typically linked to dairies, and they typically involved pastures that were closest to the dairy uh, facility itself. So they were being managed, but they were being managed much more intensively than was, was typical of our, our rangeland management throughout the county as a whole. And this slide basically shows you what we found when we, when we looked at the carbon in those two systems at varying depths. The obvious uh, difference here is 
the amendments that were being added to those intensively managed systems, specifically uh, the manure that was being hauled out of the dairies and, and then applied onto the relatively nearby pasture or rangeland systems. So that was kind of not a surprise, but on the other hand, we finally we did quantify that and, and showed that to be statistically quite significant. Well, that really kind of led us to the next question. Um, obviously, the simplest way to increase your soil carbon is to add some carbon to the soil, right? <laughs> so it seemed a little bit like cheating, but um, on the other hand, we, we felt we could, we could get at some deeper questions if we could just show that, that we could actually do that, that we could increase our soil carbon um, at, in any way that we could do it. And so we, we went into the next phase of the project. We decided to, to look a little bit deeper and to, to look at two things. We wanted to look at grazing practices, and we also wanted to look a little closer at this amendment question. We decided that we wanted to use compost instead of manure, for a couple of reasons. Um, manure, there was a risk of bringing weeds, uh, weed seed into the, the pasture system if we used manure. Um, we were concerned about uh, nutrient additions that would tend to skew our data in terms of plant species composition on these plots. So we felt if we used a, a relatively low nutrient compost, we would avoid those problems. Uh, we were also working now with two sites. We had moved, we still had the Wick Ranch sites, but we were also now looking at um, um, the Sierra Foothill Research uh, Station that UC has up in the, uh, in the um, Browns Ferry area of, of the foothills. And we, we needed to use exactly the same soil amendments on both sides. So we picked a compost producing operation sort of midway between those two locations and transported compost at a very high carbon cost, I might add, to both, both the coast, the Wick Ranch on the coast, and to the Browns uh, Valley um, location. We also were, were interested in looking at the, the effects of the yeoman's plow in, in um, conjunction with both the grazing and the compost treatment. 